All right, all right, let's get into it, man. Juan in the building. <laughs> all right, man, so uh, you wanted to uh, share your your story and your experience with uh, controversial company Super Eagle, but uh, you said that well, up under their banner, hmm. they, they ran, yes. you know, they ran multiple... Uh, companies up under their banner and you you ran for those particular banners not exactly super ego itself share your story about that exactly so back in uh february um friend of mine you know we're looking for work he shoots out out to california california chicago and he tells me about this company um multiple companies, GNS, GTS, uh, MJ, Expedite, HP State. And not all of that is unfamiliar to me. And because all I've been watching is on YouTube was uh, Super Ego and companies like that are burning. But I still want to take a chance. So he tells me, you know, come on up. He sends the recruiter my number. Uh, I head out that and they pay for the ticket, which actually I ended up paying for the ticket. And um, find out that I'm going to be running for GNS trucking, but that's who's going to pay me. But I'll be running in the letters HP Freight, um, um, HP Freight Incorporated. Those are the two names, along with GTS. Um, so I get out there and um, I don't know how deep you want me to get. I mean, because Things that we talked about that was introduced to me were not of any trucking. It was uh, drug use. So I don't know how far it goes. Is that was introduced to me from the owners and the recruiters and all that stuff. Um, so I get out there on my first day. I get picked up at the airport, brought to uh, Willowbrook. It's actually Willowbrook, Burridge, Illinois. And I start to notice the Super Eagle sign is right behind their garage. Huge sign. Welcome drivers, I think it says. Super Eagle. And so I sign on with them. I start the process. And uh, they bring me to the hotel that's behind their outlet. What can I get you? I'd like a large coffee. Okay, so hot coffee? Hot coffee. Okay, room for cream? Totally leave room for cream. So, so, so I'm new to this whole field, the the old lease thing and all this and that. And I actually want to go on the company, which I was allowed to in the beginning. So I get picked up, brought to the um office, and um I get it from Jules Willowbrook, uh, Burridge, something like that. They bring me to the hotel, and prior to even entering the hotel, this person I'm going to leave nameless, um, who's out big bag of coke and ask me straight up because I'm from Connecticut so Connecticut being close to New York could I get them when he says them I could, I'll clarify that later could I get them good coke because look at this what they have here and they wanted to buy 50 grams up front just to see the quality now I have a record I have a trafficking thing you know I dibbled and dabbled, used later on in life, but my main thing was always dealing. There's time behind it. I'm looking out the windows. I'm like, did they just bug me out here to set me up? What the hell is this? I don't know this person to my left. I get to get the truck the next day. And um, I say, no, whatever. Um, he does, he whips out his team, does it right there. His eyes broke out. Go up to the hotel, and there the next day, they pick me up. Again, we're talking about the cocaine. So I said, listen, man, am I here to find cocaine or to come to work? What do you guys want? Oh, well, the owner, now, this is what he says, so I'm not trying to jam the owners up, but it's very detailed. And I got to meet some of the owners via him, this person. I won't stay his position, but through a restaurant that's right down the road that I'll name it's called a compass. 
Compass Arena. Um, and they also own the Compass Trailer Leasing. It's a lot bigger than what people think. You think Prime Inc. is big? These people are bigger than Prime Inc. All different names collectively together is just vast. You don't know who actually the owners, or you know, it's a set of group of guys from Serbia, not Russia, Serbia. Dispatches are usually from Lithuania. So I get on the truck as a company driver, and I got plenty of text messages here that talks about, you know, the cocaine the yay, you know, getting better, or all night long partying with the owners, you know, they, they want the girls, this and that. And I'm like, Lord, why are you talking to me like this? It, I really feel like I'm being set up. Oh, oh, hold up, Juan. So first, let's, uh, let me just say allegedly here. That's all this is. Uh, well, you can say allegedly, yep. Yeah, let's say allegedly here that that's all this is going on. Wait, mm-hmm. so you allegedly yeah. you you get to the hotel and you meet some guy that's. <laughs> let's start from the hotel. So you allegedly get to the hotel and you meet some guy. No, he brought me to the hotel. He didn't meet. He brought me to the hotel. Well, you get to the hotel. But when you get to the hotel, mm-hmm. they allegedly offered you to get cocaine or cocaine. They, they asking you that you can get cocaine? Both. He pulls out a bag of cocaine. He pulls it out from underneath somewhere in the car. I don't, I, I don't know this is coming yet. I'm sitting in the car. He parks the car. Remember, this guy's the one who sent the Uber to pick me up from the airport to bring me to the office, the GNS office, which is GNS office alongside um, HP Freight and, and MJ Expedite. Those three companies are within the same. It's 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 a business uh, um, complex. So those there's two doors side by side. So one door leads to to, to where the drivers sit at and a back door that's locked up for GNS to come out of. And the door on the right side is for the HP Freight and MJ Expedite, which no one is allowed, only those people, you know, people in the office. He meets me there. So the, the person that came to pick you up from the from the airport, he... That's an Uber. The, uh, the Uber guy. He sent an Uber so from the, the okay, okay, so the yeah. Uber guy, a complete stranger, pulls out... A whole bag of no, no, cocaine. No. No. So, no, no. The guy that brought me to the hotel met me at the office. The one who sent the Uber, because of the Uber account from that company, is picked me up from the airport, brought me to the office. The guy, part of the recruiting team, which the recruiting team is also part of the office. This is all interlocked together. They, they, it's, it is divided for us to see divided, but they're all together. So the guy that I met at the office who recruit, you can say essentially recruited me is the one that brought me from the office to the hotel and, and popped out the bag of Coke. So allegedly a representative of Super Eagle or the representative no, the so comp- they're French. So they're fl- they're they're yeah, outside company. Help me understand. They're outside company. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So not so this so cocaine or anything like that has nothing to do with super ego themselves. Let's let's see if we get that clear. Not well. When I get to, later on to the story that I'm sitting at the bar at their at their restaurant called Compass Arena, cocaine is running through there. They're sitting next to me, passing the bag around. Yeah, they're all tied into it. So at that moment, what you're referring to, yeah, not yet, because I don't know that's coming yet. So you understand what I'm saying? So I, when I went back for a PM after 30,000 miles, which I did very quickly, I was brought to that restaurant, arena, whatever it is. That's where Super Eagle has their parties. Um, that's where they all hang out at. And you can easily look it up online, Compass Arena. I sat there with them, um, and I'm like, why am I sitting there? Why am I, like, the chosen in, in that sense? Like, you know, am I, I'm the throwaway guy. 
that if I ever make connections with anybody, and it's like, you know, my background. Okay, so I don't want to go too far into that because it's basically trucking. Thing, okay? I'm following. I'm following. Okay, so you're with the you're with the company. You're with one of their shell companies, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Go ahead and continue with your experience with 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 that. Why are you talking like that? Why are you talking like that? Because this is my voice. This is my voice. No, it's not. I heard you talking a minute ago. I know you don't talk like that. So I go in as a company driver. Aside from the drugs and all that, so I go in as a company driver. Um, they teach me about the double log, which I'm not very fond of, but me, you know, I do have a rebellious side and I'm trying to make it possible. I go with it. Ultimately, my own fault. No one pressures me. Um, and I'm seeing that other drivers are falling off like leaving the company and not doing the company side or even the uh, the lease side. And the recruiter asked me, well, you're staying, you're still here. So now I'm, I'm on my like 30 days, 45 days going into my first PM. And he's saying, yo, how are you making it work? And I can't get these guys to work. Now you understand, there's a, there's a language barrier, even if it's the simplest form of English to that. Now, let alone the guys that are speaking Spanish, they even, they're having even a harder time communicating with. And I was asked to try and help to communicate those guys and teach them how to finagle the, the law book and, ma and maximize your money with these loads. Because these loads are technically, most of them are team loads that they're booking. So unless when you go to a shipper and they say, we want both drivers here to show ID, and there's, there's wordings you can use to, get around, to do your best to get around that, you know, you don't lose that load. You're not getting a maximum team load payout, so you're making more money. So I was asked to try and, you know, to translate that, especially to the Spanish guys, but mainly Puerto Rican guys that come through, in which I attempted and I just gave it up. I said, you know what, I'm not a, I don't represent the company. I said, I shouldn't be doing that. I'm teaching them how to do legal shit. <laughs> I don't want to be in the middle of that. I'm doing my own, I got to worry about my own log book. So uh, we continue on and uh, come to find out I am the only company that I left. They turned everybody over into lease. Um, I, I do know, I do get some, I do have one. We'll say I have one somewhere in my message board. We use a special app that's encrypted for the rate cons that I received one, or received a rate con that was higher than what he told me. So when I told him that, and I shouldn't have said anything immediately, he says, oh, I messed up. I wrote it wrong. I have all the text messages. I have all that. Um, so he corrects and he puts it at a lower rate. And I, and I question him on it. And he says, you know, he laughs about it. He says, well, you already know how this is. You know, we take, you know, we take a percentage of what we get. And then that's, you get your 30% because that's what I did because I was a company guy. Um, and I see... In the email, um, like when accounting writes the email to send in the uh, trip packs, a lot of guys, most, all those guys are lease guys, and I feel for them because they're all struggling every single, if I run into one at, at a Love or a Pilot, they come up to me just on a ramp thing asking, hey, how good is your dispatch? You know, I'm in the negative. And I don't tell them how good I'm doing on the driver's side because I was doing well. You know, because I did use a lot of the double clock. I went, I pushed hard. I drive up to 20 hours a day. I would get it done. Um, and I would just, you know, I would feel their pain. And I would see through the message group that these guys are holding back the invoices and stuff like that. And so, fast forward, you know, I go through that fast forward until about three weeks ago. Um, I caught a load out of Virginia, I believe North Carolina, Virginia High Point, it is North Carolina, to deliver up in um, Joliet. And I had a PM service and it was to be delivered on August 2nd, which I believe that was a Wednesday. And I got to Bird Ridge on a Wednesday or Thursday. So I had that time off, which I believe it was time. So I parked the truck at their base 
and disappeared. Was on my way home for a little bit to come back the second. I lost the airplane ticket because they threw all my shit out of the truck. It's, you know, I shut the phone off. I said, I'm gone. I'll be back to make that delivery August 2nd. Um, I come back. All my shit is out of the truck. They charge me for it. Um, they owed me two weeks of pay. They have my escrow. And ultimately, I felt back against the wall. They said, well, we'll take you back under the condition of now you're going to lease. Now you're going to you know, do that. And I says, I says, but I don't want to lease. I was doing fine. Well, you already have your money in the escrow insurance. You know, we owe you two weeks the invoices, whatever. We'll roll that into it. Now we won't deduct from you. Because I don't like the lease side. I know what goes on on the lease side. Oh, we won't do that to you. Well, lo and behold, that's what they did. So I get on the lease side, bench my gut feeling, and um, dollar twenty for a mile, and I'm stuck with this fifteen hundred dollar week payment, twenty percent because it goes to the uh, dispatch, the fuel, I'm um, six thousand dollars a week. You know, it didn't take me long to say, you know what? Now I know why guys are deserving the trucks, and um. Uh, that's basically it. And I see a lot of the guys that are going through this are mainly minorities. That's the big factor that I see. That most minorities are the ones they're taking advantage of. Because if you look at, if you actually go to their base and you see some of their European uh, fellows, whatever you want to call them, they're thriving. They are thriving. They're happy. They're making money. You go to any black, any black dude, most black Jews, any Spanish Jews, Puerto Rican, Mexican, whatever the case may be, we're all struck. We get the shit at. And I asked my recruiter, I asked him about it because I built a relationship with him. And, um, you know, he, he kind of opens up and he says, you know, you guys are just taking it. You guys come here thinking that, you know, you're going to make all this money. And then they go and they, they shaft you with all these bills. It's just, that's how it is. From super eager, super eager is just a carrier. He says that guy there, you know, they're all the same. That's what he says. They're all the same, different people putting different company names, and they're all the same. So it's just a big racket, and I really feel that it's towards us minorities take the most advantage of, and we fall for it every time. Now, I left the drugs completely out of it. There's more about the drugs and the, and the prostitution, but... <laughs> I left that all on the side. Prostitution? Ah, damn it, man. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on that in a minute. But, uh, <laughs> damn, drugs, it's, it's, prostitution, it's guys, uh, not paying yeah, drivers. Like, Woohoo, man. But all of this is alleged. Yeah. So, uh, so let me, uh, let me just roll it back for a little bit. So, you was actually doing good as a company driver. Uh, but Very you, fair. but 30%. you, you was going, what, you was going on your home time? Did you let them know that you was going on your home time? Like, what happened? Why did they, why, why did they come and uh, get you out of the truck? So when I got back, when I got up to, to Burridge to get the truck serviced, um, the date was for August 2nd. So on my way there, they, Juliet's only like 20, 20 miles away from the base. Jolie, however way you want to pronounce it, um, he says to me, "Now this, the, the, my dispatcher that was telling me to go to the tr attempt a delivery, he's covering for my normal di di dispatcher." So he says, "Go and see if you can do the delivery." So when I get there, um, is that what it was? But I get there and they only take until 11 a.m. I was shocked, 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. And the lady at the at, at, uh, on the um, um, CB, talking to the security guy, says, yeah, we only just, just set for August 2nd. And I see that in the paperwork, but we usually go in earlier. So she said, we're not taking it earlier. We're tired. This broker's always scheduling early. So fine, whatever. I do the loop around. I pull out of there, pull over, relay this to the dispatcher. I tell them I'm taking some time off. They got to do a thorough PM on this. I have not been home in three months. Even though I don't like going home, I'm going to take this opportunity to go. August 2nd is Wednesday next week. I believe it was Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday next week. Oh, but we can attempt. I said, listen, man. I said, listen, man. 
I'm tired of always attempting and going on the clock and then sitting around for the day. I want to go home. I'm going to go home. August 2nd, the lady said it. Until I get to base, you find out something different, tell me and make sure it's guaranteed. So when I get to the to base, I bring the truck in. It's ready in the afternoon, in the evening. No service is going to be done. I speak to dispatch again. He says, no, I still haven't heard nothing. I said, look, I'm booking a flight. I'm gone. I'll be back. That's where it was left. Next thing I know, I'm getting phone calls within a day and a half, left and right. My recruiter tracks me down, and he says, yo, man, they took all your stuff off the truck. And, and I explained to him, I showed him the communication with the dispatch. And um, he says, let me see. He says, he says, this lack of communication is, is, is not one of their best suits. And um, I showed him the communication with the, with the dispatch. And so he comes back to me. They, he gets my stuff. They put it in bags. Um, that weekend, it was raining out in California, um, from Chicago. And um, he puts it in his truck, whatever. I get back to the hotel. I, I'm asked out of, I'm asked out every which way. So I said, listen, man, they owe me this amount of money. They owe me my school. There's nothing wrong with the truck. Matter of fact, that truck is already gone. They already, they turned that truck to someone else. That fast. That truck was located in North Carolina. My regular dispatch came on, and, and I have the screenshot. He says, I have you at North Carolina with your login. I said, how is that possible? I'm in Chicago. And he says, so, so they go to figure out. So my recruiter comes back to me. He says, they wanted to take you under these terms. You roll in whatever they owe you. They're going to put it forward towards the um, truck. And right there, bells are going off. I said, I'm already feeling a deduction coming in for what they owed me if I walk away. But now they want all of it. It's getting rolled into the truck, down payment, escrow, everything is paid for. I had a, it, they said they gave me a brand new truck, and sure enough, they did. And um, and it was the worst decision I've ever made in my life, probably. Decision, worst decision ever. Yeah. So you went on your, so you told them that you was going on your home time. Yeah. Sounds as though that this load wasn't due until the the next following week? Second. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So I still have a bill there. I still got the communication, yeah. Okay, so the so the law wasn't due until the next following week. So you just took the opportunity to you you let the fleet manager know, hey, I'm about to, you know, about to head home right quick, take care of some business, and then I'll be back and I'll hop in the truck and I'll get the load to the uh you know to the receiver on the on the date that is supposed to actually be there so was that communicated between you and your actual fleet manager or was this a or was this a like a weekend fleet manager this i am going this this was with my dispatcher or the dispatcher that was covering for the um for my regular dispatcher so that's where the miscon miscommunication came into play. I don't think there's much. He just wants me to go every day to keep checking. Meanwhile, this truck has to get PM'd. So where is it in time? So, so you want them not to do the PM yet, but you want me to take the truck out of the yard and go and check for this um, to see if I can make the delivery in the morning, which she clearly said no. And I relayed that to him. And I, and, and I show you the screenshot, which you should have received by now. Um, and, and then, because the truck is in the yard while I'm waiting to make the delivery, I can't stay in the sleeper. I have to go rent a hotel, room, which they're not going to pay. So I said, no, my option was to go. So I laughed. So I said, August 2nd. August 2nd. He called me up, and I verbally told him. I said, no, it's August 2nd. Do what you want. I mean, not do what you want. Now I see that now, but no, no, you're not gonna have me go every day checking, and and I gotta stop the PM. Can't get the PM done. Can't even start it because of that. So when I do make the delivery, that's gonna cost me even more. So why why shouldn't I be able to go home if the scheduled date is for August second, on um, the following week? And I already tempted once, and I'm letting you to try. I'm giving you option or giving you room to call and find a broker and you're telling me no you're telling me you can't that no one's coming back to you neither do you because nobody actually talks like this 
You choose to talk like this, and today I chose to talk like this. It's pretty fucking annoying, isn't it? Why are you so rude, man? So they pretty mm-hmm. much forced you out mm-hmm. of a company position and and wheeled you mm-hmm. in to lease one of their trucks. Because they already have, exactly, they already have, my, my escrow's been paid. I don't like bills. Um, I don't know. I'm at a point in my life. I'm trying to minimize bills, minimize bills. You know, my kids are grown. I'm on my own. And um, once I seen that ask, I said, okay, let's take, let's pay that out quick. Let me pay for that quick. Take bigger chunks. That was paid for immediately. Uh, you know, amongst other things, and and I would just let invoices add up. You know, because I like to see a big check. You know, when I get paid, and they they had about. In total, with the escrow, seven thousand dollars coming my way. If they were to clear everything, that's what I should have gotten cashed out. If I had turned away and walked away from driver and not going to to um, lease. So you paid the escrow up front. Escrow came out of there because I already had paid it, so it just rolled. So the escrow and down payment, seven thousand dollars for the truck, right then and there, I signed on. So they didn't owe me anything once I became lease. So now I'm working from the bottom again on hopes and dreams on that these rates will be good, that it'd be higher. And and I was blinded. I I I, I should have been more focused on you know what the, these guys are going through because you read the emails. I read the emails. I've come across other GNS truck drivers that were on the road and, and you know, we shared complaints. They had more complaints than I did because I'm the company guy. I didn't tell them that. Because come to find out, I was, when I found out I was the only company, they asked me to keep that quiet. The reason why I was kept as company, because I run the clock. I will run hard. So, of course, they're making the bulk of it. I don't count your money. I, don't, I never counted the company's money until now. So as long as my checks were decent, were good, and the 2000 plus on average, sometimes I would get 15 Sometimes it'd even be 1000 on a bad week. But trust, that bad week, I was somewhere in South Dakota sightseeing you know i took time off but that was all through company side and then i leave went over that was just done 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 i just i just it was not worth it it's never worth it no one this is predatory these are predatory contracts at its finest and and i just don't know how they get away with it aside from us signing and agreeing to it there's got to be some, there's always protection. There's always consumer protection on, on every left. Credit cards, payday loans. Where is the protection on these? Is, is that, that people are just getting hammered and working for basically for free and going in the hole. I don't see that protection at all. We get blinded. They sell us a dream. Sell us a dream and we fall for it. Let's say if you didn't, uh, Go lease with them, would they would have would they would have gave would they would have gave your money back? Like what, what they was talking about? Not I was giving just on regular you? pay. No, no, they were never talking about not giving my money back. If you say so, you ask your question is had I not done the lease and what came home instead and just stopped ended it as company, correct? Is no, that your question? I'm, no, I'm asking if they if you decided not to go lease, would you would have got your escrow back? Yeah, so that's what I just did. Yeah, that was the question of that. Um, I would have got my escrow. I would have, the invoices that I was owed to me, it was a total of close to $7,000, if not seven. That was my total that was due to me, that they, didn't, they hadn't paid me that Monday. So I left on a Thursday. That Monday, that that weekend was when all this shit was going down. So that Monday, we get paid on Monday. There was no deposit made. So you didn't get paid for none of your deliveries? None of those prior to, to those two weeks prior to me leaving for that bit, thinking I'm going to come back and make that delivery in a second. No. It all got rolled into the lease. They said, okay, they acknowledge they owed me. They acknowledge my escrow. They acknowledged all that, and I and I stood by that. There's nothing wrong with the truck, so don't nothing, no deduction should be wrong with the truck. 
Uh, aside from a cleaning, which you got to do because you gave to somebody else $150, so be it. But there's the tires are good, the brakes are good. I didn't smash the truck, no accident, no nothing. The truck is fine. They said, okay, you're right. It's fine. We're going to put this into here and to lease. Nothing else going forward comes out of your check. So everything you work that you lease from this day on, from this day on, you, um, you, um, you're going to, uh, it's all yours, basically all yours, aside from the deductions, your typical deductions. You know what I'm saying? So. All right. So let's make this clear. This, this isn't super ego that you're driving for this. What's the name of the company that you're driving for? There's three names on GTS, which is pretty decent. They got nice trucks and trailers. So the same shit. GTS is on the trailer. GNS is on the truck and trailer. GNS trucking. And as a Nancy, GNS. And HP Freight is on the tractor. Who who was you was actually getting paid from? GNS. GNS would pay me. HP Freight was the ones that got me the load. Those when I go on the log on the ELD, that's who the ELD was under. Uh, HP Freight. So when I call it in to switch over to ask me the company name, it would be HP Freight. Now that you mentioned the logs, uh, you know, we, we <laughs> understand that, you know, some companies like the, you know, like to finagle the logs. So in order for you to run the way you want or run the way you was running, you were switching between two different companies in the logs? No. No, two different names. I would have a co-driver. So my co-driver would be dropped off. So when I go to switch, I would put in their remarks at the bottom remarks. Um, lockout man dropped him off at the logs. He's quitting. He has fancy, whatever the case may be. Something simple, not too deep. Definitely not location. They would, do, they would change all that and edit it when you ask for another share. You understand? They they want all all they want you to do is when you go to switch, is when they give you a fresh set of hours, they'll tell you, okay, Juan, looks like you drove from point A to point, or your co-driver drove from point A to point B, and now he's leaving, he's switching over, and just remember, do your PTI and minimum writing that um the co-driver quit last whatever. And that's it. Just stop doing that. I can't help it. It's my voice. No, it's not. It's an affectation that annoying teenagers and rich people use to sound like they don't give a shit. They'll give you a co-driver's name or you you finagle a co-driver's name even though there's there's no, no co-driver. I don't finagle I don't I don't finagle anything and actually actually if you stay right there it's safe. I can send you there. This I can send you also how it looks. There you go, and I'll forward that to you as well. So you so you have something based on what I, at least I'm saying. So we're not just going based on everything that I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying? So that's an email from Safety Monitor to me, and that is that one of those things right there that you see is my code jack, supposedly code jack. So they finagle a co driver, even though there's a co yeah. there's not a co driver there. Exactly. Oh, okay. So they so they get in the way by making it look like that you have a co driver. And say for example, if you get pulled over by DOT, it could make it like, mm -hmm. okay, I dropped the co driver off. And mm -hmm. you just running your clock. Okay, 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 okay. I got you. I got mm -hmm. you. I got you. Okay. And and this is on the company side. This 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 isn't on the lease side, right? This is on the company side, exactly. I should have sent you that screenshot of safe of them emailing me the co driver's name that I that I memorized. And you have to memorize it in some way. You have to, you, you got to have some sort type of criminality to you to, you know, when you talk to DOT, you do. You can't fumble. I've been through it twice. 
you know, I kept my dirty clothes would be in a bag, be like, yeah, he left all his dirty clothes there and shit like that. Just in case they go in. But, you know, you gotta, you gotta, without going into too deep, too much detail, but just getting details, yeah, it's one of the worst time experiences with this cold driver, or he didn't smoke or whatever. I left him there, his mama's boy, whatever the case may be, but then you just leave it there. Let the OT deal with it. And I passed twice. They thoroughly. I'm talking about, I sat here an hour and they went through that law book. And they went through that law book with no issues. They passed twice. Wow. We we out here, we trying to make the money, the you know, the the much time that we have, the more money that we got, man. But but why suggest your your livelihood on on that, bro? Like why 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 even So it goes back to what I just said. It's just, you know, I, I, I do come from a criminal background, even though I've been straight for many years. Um, and I guess they see this in a lot of certain guys that we don't think, and this is the sad part, you know, I don't blame my background as far as where I come from, whatever. It's just, you know, my brother asked me the same thing, similar to what you said, and he knows nothing about truck. And he says, so you're telling me if you get into an accident, you don't have somebody with you in the truck. You're, they're looking for that driver and he was never with you. That's when I knew and I said, Company gets away with it. And it's just get blinded and in in some ways it's, it's the thrill of beating the system and it's a terrible thing, but it's just I'm so accustomed to doing that in some ways. Like being able to get away with it. And then I especially on the company side, I'm making the money. It's like I'm being rewarded. You know. And you know, you can say, well, not you're not being rewarded, at least that is not what you're talking about. Yeah, that is also correct. But now I got to experience it. And at least for me, it didn't take long for me to say, yeah, this is some bullshit here. I don't know how guys do this for a month, two months. I did it not even three weeks and I was out. I lost it all, but I was out because there was no risk reward factor. It was just all risk and a reward with the company. I don't know if that helps you or not, but it's just being able to get away with a crime. It's in the blood, in my system. Sucks. Wow, that's a that's a hell of a story, bro. It's it's, it's true. It's it really it really is, and and I have a clean back, background now, but I, I still at forty six, I still find myself. I get bored easily, and I'm not, I'm not trying to get too personal here, but that's, you know, the thrill of, can I get away doing this or that? You know, my, well, it's, you know, straight as you try to be, you know, and right now working 10-hour clock, it just, it seems so boring to me now. It really does. It's like, fuck, I'm like going to do only 10 hours when I can do more, I'm gaining more, you know. Because there is money to be made, but it's definitely not not on the lease side. And I was, you know, making money on thirty percent. You said uh, you you let it go. Uh, you walked away from it. You figured that you figured that it wasn't uh, worth you know worth your livelihood, and that's a good thing. But uh, you did mention you know back up into the story that uh, that they actually said that they target minorities uh, yes. for the lease program because they figured that yes. the minorities come in thinking that they can get rich quick off of there by the way they ads is, is, is presented out there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So, even yeah, the, the, because we're, the, we're easily influenced and, and, and it's easy to sell us a dream of um, here's a truck, here's a trailer. You need nothing to get into it. Um, we're gonna do a PM. You go through the whole thing, take a picture. You don't feel right, we we'll change the truck before you leave. It's a little bit better than going through Super Eagle. Super Eagle forces it on you. So these guys are a little bit, you know, they're more selective on who they bring, even though it's the off branch of Super Eagle. Um, 
you know, so we're easily influenced. So you take us, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, your background, you know, you come from, you know, when you're younger, younger years, you know, it was pretty rough, you know, not that much money. Here you are, you're dealing with thousands of dollars, but you don't realize the thousands of dollars is actually going to them. And you're lucky if you make a thousand, you know, the, the, it's just, They'll make you sit for a day or two and tell you there's no load. And I downloaded the that board and I said, there's loads everywhere fighting with them, fighting with them. And it's just, it's just, it's sad. It's sad because we we're, we are the most gullible ones because we are, we have the less in everything. We have the least in everything, should I say this? And it's true. And it's true. Now, you get some of those European guys that come from their country, those guys are thriving each and every single one of them, thriving, barely speak English. They're, how they're doing it, I, I don't look at their books, I don't have access to their books, but they're thriving. They're, they're, they got loads all the time. When you get us Blacks and us Spanish people, it's, it's... You say that's where the target is at. All right. Uh, all right, so, bro, before we get on up out of here, I, I got to ask you about the about the prostitution, bro. <laughs> what? I mean, you, you get into the hotel and you said that the company would be like, hey, you know, we got some, uh, you know, we got some, uh, you know, some free time. Oh, or okay. I mean, dude, talk, talk about the prostitution, bro. So I had a, a Brazilian girl that I was introduced from them. I'm going to say from that point in time to me and on more than one occasion, that Brazilian girl actually scammed me on, on cash out, which I do cash out, and um, siphoned a lot of money for me into her account. And I only met that Brazilian girl through them and through the party of the court. So she likes her. They have their yay. They all party together. It was one of the benefits that I, you know, I come to Chicago, I go home, when you come here, you get everything you want. Now, I haven't done that in years, and I found myself just dabbing into it. I'm a grown man, I make my own um, In front of the camera, picking the broad, door in the car. So she, can't, yeah, so I got scammed out of it. Yep, so she, you know, she likes to get paid in the cash app. I let her use my phone. She burned me out of cash app. So she scared me out of cash app. So I had to, you know, do unauthorized charges and all that. But I only met that woman through them. And when I say them, it's the company men of GNS, GTS, HP Freight. It's the only, I, know, I don't know anyone in Chicago. And while, we're, while I'm in the truck in Chicago, Sniffing coke with the escort from them with the camera facing me, and it's not a problem. All I was asked was, "Are you going to be able to drive the next day? Are you okay, Bob?" That's what said to me on multiple occasions. So they know clearly, and I don't know if it's it, the rules were bent for me. They shouldn't be bent for anyone on that level. I knew that this. And that's and that's more of the recent times it's happened. Um, you know, I haven't done coke in a long time. I found myself doing it when I got there because the availability that they, you know, was provided to me, and I knew I had. Juan, I'm I'm going to have to stop you. They they didn't do no they didn't do no drug tests on you or anything like that because now you got you got substance in your system, which is going to be a little bit difficult to get to the next job, bro. No, it's it, well, yeah, I do, but I give her urine, urine's fine. But three days, the urine's gone. I understand that. I understand that's why I left from there. That's a problem that, you know, I made that decision. I don't blame them, but that's the atmosphere that's there. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, okay, okay. That's the atmosphere. That's part of the atmosphere. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. Okay, okay. So you saying the so back to the back to the female. Uh so you 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 get with the female, she only wants cash app, but your cash app didn't work because she scammed you out of the cash app. How that work? 
So just because I talk like this means I don't give a shit? Yeah. And what exactly am I supposed to not give a shit about? That's an excellent question to ask yourself in your actual voice. Excuse me. Some of us would like to order. Fuck it, everybody. Worked a lot. <laughs> it worked a lot. It ripped off, but that's that's she was. <laughs> it worked a lot. But what I'm getting at is that I never, I didn't know her until I met them. They introduced me to her. So that's the prostitution thing comes in. She goes to their office. She parties with them. Get what I'm saying? Oh, I don't know if you're okay. familiar with that type of world. No, nah, no, nah, not familiar with so, that at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> so no, Friday I haven't evening got. Comes. I haven't gotten with a with a with a trucking company that that would introduce me to you know uh, 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 a worker of sorts. I mean, you know, I I seen them in the, I, you know, I I seen them in the truck stops and and stuff like that, but not at an actual trucking company, <laughs> you know. So, but yeah. oh, okay, so you so you I, I guess you partaked it, Woofer. How 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 you know this? You you don't have to answer this, but how how, how much was. What's the experience for you? Um, in total, it was like um seventeen on Cash App. And then seven, wait, wait, wait! It's on multiple occasions. Wait, so wait, wait, wait! Seventeen hundred. Seven? What? Yeah, on Cash App, and then uh, doesn't count like directly from my account. You, like that, yeah. Wait, so, bro, so you, total, you, you pay thousand? No, no, this is more than one. Yeah, you, this is on more than one occasion. Man, how much does this shit is, cost, you know, bro? Yeah. Three thousand? Well, I mean, yeah, this I'm, is what I'm, I tell you. What you got? Bro, on the company side. Bro, how many times <laughs> you got with this chick? Uh, how, how, how many times you got with this I, chick? I told you that I was able to. I was a couple, more than a once, a few times. That was the only one that I was introduced to because I would only go there for the PM and I would sit there. So the time that I wanted to come home was the issue. You understand what I'm saying? Wait, I'm I'm tripping on meanwhile, the meanwhile when I'm there. Wait, 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 wait. I'm 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 tripping on the female part. You 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 partaked mm -hmm. with this female a few times, and and it rounded mm -hmm. out it rounded out to be about three thousand dollars in total. In total, and between the yay and her, between yep. the yay and 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 the female, her three thousand yep. well, dollars. From yep. from, yep. from yep. Yep. allegedly from the company that you drove that you driven for. That oh yep, that they said yep, they hooked. That's the only that's the God's honest truth. Strike me dead. That is the only reason why I know that bro. That's the only way I could have known. I don't go on the websites, you know. I used to go many years ago. I told you that. I said that earlier. And I used to part, do, do the gay years ago. But I hadn't. And when I found myself in this, going through this here with them, and then they um, switching me over to lease, and now I can really start seeing what's going on here. And it's just using me as, as a driver, not really giving a fuck about someone. And ultimately, they don't care about the truck if I get smashed because I've been up all night and party, you know, because that camera's right there. And I, um, I said, I, I had to come to my senses. I, could, I made a sober decision during a mental breakdown of no, when I made that decision to leave, I was home already. I was in New Haven already. I was, no, nothing in the system, no party, none of that shit. I was just saw myself going negative, negative, negative. And I saw the outcome. I said, no. Nah. You know, then two weeks prior, three weeks prior, they got pissed because I went home or was going home. And I didn't stay there partying with them and spending my money. So, so, that's, so, it's, it's, so essentially, they would just want you to be trapped and work for them all the time. So, you know, I'm not partying with them. I'm not doing it. I could see where the money's well, going. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> but that part I can see where the money. I, I can see where the money's that, going. 
<laughs> so, yeah, that, I'm, I'm making it. That, remember, I made that money on the company side, so I'm not I'm not bothered by that. But now when I'm now I got no money to party with, <laughs> you know, um, I just, uh, you know, I'm looking at it as, you know, financially I'm fucked because to spend $3,000 was nothing because I'm company. I did very well. One double clock illegal. Yes. At that time, not getting high, not, you know, I, all it is is conversation. And then I come back. It's a different story. You know, I partied a little bit. I laughed. And then this, it came back again this last time. This when the trouble when they didn't like decisions that I made, and not to run until August second. You know, um, I'm not going to be hanging around here, hanging with you guys. Because first of all, I don't have money to match you guys, and I don't need no girl. I'm going home. That's basically it. That's how I see it. And when I do that, it's an issue. It's a problem. Ask away. Keep asking, thank you. I'm being honest with you. I'm being 100%. You know, this shit they usually keep the quiet, take to the grave. But the, the thing that matters the most to me is people can judge me. You know, the ultimate last judgment is God. But people could see that these companies are no good. I don't care where it's at. Never lease. Never. Zero down. $5,000. Never lease because you're tied into their. Um, um, dispatching service, and they control your money. You'll never control your own money. I understand. You'll never. And I saw that very quickly. So if anybody wants to take anything away from this, uh, it's a fair warning. There's hundreds, if not thousands of warnings on, on YouTube about this. I'm telling you from my own life experience right now that I had, and I've never walked away from the company. I never quit it in my life. I'm going back to food service. Very simple to thing. Empty out the trailers. Feel good about good about that. Well, why, man? Well, first thing first. Thank you very much for sharing your story with us, man. I really do appreciate it. But you do know right. that you know everybody in the comment session is going to be like, "This was your, uh, you, you the one that accepted all of this." So they gonna they gonna they gonna see it. No, no, that I know way. that. Oh, no, I know that. We all accept it. Anybody who's went to lease, accept it on their own. I'm not doing it. I'm talking about moving forward. Take away. It, it don't, you know, don't even look at everything else as entertainment. Take, take what I'm saying is leasing is not worth it. You will not make the money. There are very few people that are successful in it. Do not believe the hype. You cannot survive off a dollar fifty, dollar seventy a mile under lease. It's impossible. It's impossible. And especially not doing a double law book. You have to do it and you have to run hard. You so, know, again, why they're gonna they, they gonna they're gonna look at that and they're gonna be like, Yeah, we we agree with you to a certain point, but right. They, they again, they're going to turn around and be like, well, you know, you accepted that and probably might say that you probably accepted that um, uh, uh, under influence. <laughs> they can say what they want, but it's not under influence. <laughs> not under influence. How am I going to go give a company urine under influence? They don't fucking know me. <laughs> but hey, people are entitled to say whatever they want. I'm entitled to say what I want. The ultimate judgment is God. I'm putting out there my 100% experience. I put myself out there. I didn't have to. I reached out to you. You never reached out to me. Um, I watched your podcast for the last few months. You know, I appreciate what you do and how you let people just speak. Uh, you can question me on anything. I've been open with you. I've been more open with you than my own brother. So, you know, the lesson here is, is, is don't lease. That's my, that's my word of encouragement. If I could help anyone, don't lease. I, anyone. I appreciate it, bro. Big G's got it locked. Boy. Won't you let me on